YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm Patty, I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video, I am going to uh, just have a little bit of a chat with you about what I've been using for my sewing table. I've shared with you in the past about my cutting table, which you can see behind me. I love it. <laughs> I'll link to the video all about that particular piece. Uh, and spoiler alert, they're both from Ikea. Now I know people have a love-hate relationship with Ikea. I'm gonna tell you something, I really like them. I think the value that you get for the piece of furniture is amazing. And I see people complain about them and call them cheap and da 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 da. I don't know what pieces you're looking at, <laughs> uh, but I have uh, used a lot of furniture and put together a lot of pieces in my life. And I, I think these are nice pieces. Now, the calyx, which you can also see kind of behind me over here, you know, that's that's not the, the world's uh, most expensive stuff, but uh, you know, for what it does, I think it's a great value. I love mine. I have the piece back here that I use to help organize sewing supplies. The second one I put together, it's in the back room, which I call my den, and it just is like a general organizational piece, and I use it uh, to like, like a, an entertainment console, we'll put it that way. So I've enjoyed using them and I think they look really good and they're easy to keep clean. <laughs> Let me tell you, the Ikea furniture is very easy to keep clean. The white coating that they put on the furniture, it's so easy to care for. You can take a damp cloth and wipe it down and then dry it with a soft towel and it cleans up beautifully. I love this furniture. Okay, so let's talk about the sewing table. Um, the piece that I have is called the Norden Gateleg Table, and it retails for $199 US. It comes in pine and white. I have the white. I really wanted the pine, but it never came into stock, so I got the white. I have to tell you that now that I've been using it for several months, I'm really glad I have the white for sewing. I think the pine table would be a beautiful dining table or separate craft or like if you wanted to make puzzles or something really beautiful for that but for sewing i do like the white this table as the name implies um, it has uh, large leaves that raise and lower so when the table is fully extended it measures uh, 60 inches across so it's like five feet all the way across when fully extended which is a good size table it is 31 and a half inches deep or 31 and a half inches across. So fully extended, you've got a sewing surface that is 60 by 31. When both of the leaves are in the down position, that makes the table like really skinny and it only measures like 12 and a half inches deep. So if you're in a small space and you need to set up and take down frequently, this table is fantastic because you can set the leaves up, get out your machine and sew on it. When you're done, put it back and it tucks right up to the wall. It is amazing. This table, uh, not only is it super flexible in terms of being able to raise and lower the leaves for whatever application you want, maybe you only need one side. If you're just sewing some stuff, you know, you can use like just one leaf up. Like when I'm in here doing quilting, I put up both sewing machines and I put up both leaves and it works beautifully. And it leaves me ample room for workspace, which I'll show you that in a minute. This table features six large deep drawers, which are fabulous for storage. So like uh, you can put all of your um, electrics that go with your sewing machines right into the drawers. You don't have to worry about tucking them away inside of the machine cover and whatever. You just tuck them in the drawers and it's right there when you're ready for them. Okay, so let's talk about my general setup. And I will do a, a more in-depth video about my sewing setup in a different video. Today, let's just look at how I use the table. So I have two sewing machines that I use and this has worked really well for me. I have my main machine that I use for sewing and piecing, the secondary machine that I put the walking foot on. So I don't have to be constantly changing that out because you know, the walking foot, you gotta take everything off of the, the, the shank, you know, install this thing. <laughs> it, it, it's not hard, but uh, I don't wanna be constantly taking that off and on and off and on and off and on. It could be wear and tear on a critical 
uh, component of your machine. So if you are blessed enough to have two machines, um, really consider using one with just your walking foot. It will make your life uh, like a million times easier. So I have the two machines. I have one for piecing, one with a walking foot that I use for my quilting. And they're pretty much set up. When I get ready to start going into quilt mode, they're both set up. I use two lights. I have an Ot light that I bought years ago uh, through Joanne when it was on sale. Uh, and then I have uh, a light fixture from Ikea that was very inexpensive. And I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but I will put the name of it uh, below where I'm talking so you can see what it is. I love that little light. I actually have two of them. One we use on the dining table. When both leaves are up, you have so much space for sewing. It is amazing. You know, when I was in the store looking at it, it it, it looked kind of small. You know, that's the thing in a big showroom. Things look really small. <laughs> and then you get it home and you're like, oh, that's bigger than I thought. So uh, for me, that was a pleasant surprise because uh, it looked small in the store and it didn't seem like super sturdy. I was, I was really concerned about it, but I thought I'll try it. So I was pleasantly surprised. It has more than enough space for uh, managing even a large quilt. If you like to do full size quilts, you have plenty of space and you can lay out your uh, finished blocks right there where you can see what you're doing. So it, it really works well. Plenty of room for both machines and still having workspace. So I mentioned earlier, like I use the drawers to organize the cords. So when I set up, I always put uh, the machines on the same side of the table. And so I keep the uh, power cord and the foot pedal uh, cords in the drawers on the side where that machine goes. So, you know, that's just really easy for me to remember and to set up. Because I set up and take down this table, uh, and it's kind of heavy, uh, I like to be able to slide it to the wall and out. And so I use those uh, furniture movers to be able to do that. And because I'm on carpeting, I use furniture movers that are smooth on the bottom. So they're plastic on the bottom and you just put them under the furniture feet and you just slide it in and out and it's super easy. So you can move really heavy furniture really easily that way. If you're on um, a tile or a vinyl floor, they have different furniture movers that are um, fabric -y or something, and so that, that will also let you slide. I have used those as well. What I like about this table, so let's do pros and cons. What I like about this table, or we'll call it likes and dislikes. Let me tell you what I like about the table. I think it looks great. <laughs> I really do. I think it looks fantastic. Even when I have it set up um, for use, and it's right here in the room, I still think it looks really good. It's super space efficient. So uh, if I want to have you know more space in the room or I'm gonna put the sewing machines away for a while, you put the sewing machines away for a while and you put the leaves down and you just tuck that table right up on the wall and it looks beautiful. It's clean, it's neat, it looks organized. And because I live in a small space, I am constantly battling the clutter. And you know, when you're sewing and crafting, it's a lot of clutter. So keeping that under control is important to me. And this does help. I find the table to be extremely sturdy. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I was concerned it wouldn't be heavy duty enough for sewing. I think it works great. I don't have any problems with the table shaking or anything like that. It's plenty heavy for uh, what I'm doing. And like I said, it has ample space for laying your projects out. Uh, I have seen some people uh, when I looked on reviews on the IKEA site, um, people talk about using it for their cutting table. It's big enough, but the thing of it is it's low. And if you're doing a lot of cutting, it's going to start to bother your back. So, you know, if you're going to do a whole lot of cutting, I do recommend having something higher, which is why I bought that kitchen island to use for my cutting table because it's higher and I'm not constantly bending over because that is horrible on your back after a while. Uh, and the table itself, it's, uh, it's solid birch. So um, it's a nice table. All right, let me give you some downsides or we'll call them dislikes uh, to the table. Okay, this thing is a lot to put together. Uh, I wouldn't say this is a beginner project. Um, if you have not put together your, your own furniture or pieces, uh, this, this could be a real challenge for you. Um, the biggest thing with it is all of the drawers because you've got six drawers to put together and they were a lot of screws, uh, screws and hammering. So I don't know that I would recommend this to you as a first project. If you can put together the Calyx units 
and put feet on them and put the drawers together for the calyx, uh, that's a good warm up to the Norden. So like I said, six drawers, tons of screws. Um, I remember when I put this together, my arms and hands were so sore because I do everything with screwdrivers. I don't have a drill at the moment. So everything is a screwdriver. And a holy smoke, I was really sore. Um, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, you're, you're gonna need some real oomph to get those uh, screws into the drawers because the drawers are wood, they're heavy duty. So um, keep that in mind. Also, it's a lot of hammering. So if you live in a place where you're living close, like if you're in a condo or a townhouse or apartment, uh, don't do this at midnight. <laughs> Don't do it when everybody's home and, uh, you know, cause you're gonna make your neighbors crazy and we don't want to do that. The boxes are very heavy. So this is um, a piece of furniture that's going to come with two boxes. So you have two boxes of stuff to put together. They're both really heavy. Um, I looked up the weight. Uh, one of the boxes weighs approximately 58 pounds and the other one weighs approximately 50 pounds. So uh, all together, it's 108 pounds and it's heavy. Uh, and they're big, you know, they're like three by four feet or something. So um, if you gotta get it up or downstairs, you definitely have got to have someone help you. Uh, I have a furniture dolly, so I can move just about anything. So when I picked it up, um, you know, I was able to just kind of get it up and into my minivan which wasn't bad. And when I got home, I was able to pull it out and just put it right on the furniture dolly to bring in. But if you don't have a furniture dolly and you have any stairs, you, you got, you're gonna have to have help. It's heavy. And it's not even that you can like uh, open the boxes outside and bring in the pieces separately because the leaves and stuff, they're like kind of together. Uh, so you just trust me, you're gonna, you're gonna need a second pair of hands. So this table, uh, it took up a lot of space to put together and it was the same issue with the, um, the kitchen island. It's, they're, you know, when they're fully in use, they're large. Um, so when you put the Ikea stuff together, you're down on the floor, you put your uh, stuff into piles so that you can organize it and get it together. Uh, so it did take up a lot of space. Now I have a carpeted floor in here so I could just work right on the carpet. If you do not have carpeting, you'll either need to do this table on like a larger area rug or you're gonna need to put down uh, blankets uh, because you're gonna be sliding stuff around and you don't wanna do that on a hard floor because you'll scratch your table and you don't wanna scratch up your beautiful table. Uh, this table is not a beginner project. I mentioned that earlier. And when I looked in the reviews, I saw a couple of people say this thing was really hard to put together. I didn't think it was especially difficult. Once you kind of get the hang of putting drawers together, it's not bad. The kitchen island, that's the hardest thing I've ever put together. <laughs> that really challenged me. Yeah, neither one of these are beginner projects, uh, so you might need help. So you either need someone in your life who is handy that can help you, or you're going to have to go through that task rabbit thing and, and pay someone to put it together. So that will add to your cost. But if you're adventurous and uh, you can follow the instructions, put it together yourself. It's very rewarding to be able to do things on your own and put together your own furniture. So as a general recommendation, put this thing together over a couple of days. So like on the first day, like start in the afternoon when you have some light, get your boxes open, uh, get your pieces out, get them, you know, organized, go over your instructions, uh, put all of your little screws and um, dowels and bits and pieces, uh, organize those and make sure you have everything you need. And then for the first day, put together three drawers. Just do the three drawers. Uh, and then by the time you get through with that, you'll have the hang of it. The next day, come back to it, put together the last three drawers and then go ahead and get your table constructed. Personally, I always start with the drawers. I like to get drawers done first because I feel like the drawers are done, they're ready to go, and so when the furniture item is put together, I'm just slipping the drawers in. And, and you just, to me, it's a better sense of accomplishment than having the furniture piece together and then you gotta put the drawers together. So start with the drawers. <laughs> Trust me, just get the drawers done. And uh, when the table is up and ready, you just put them in place. I did a video recently talking about um, prepping your quilting and sewing supplies. And 
uh, the big thing that I wanted to convey to, uh, to viewers is that uh, we're in a huge supply chain debacle. It is a mess. Everybody's doing something different and uh, it has made a mess. It has made an incredible mess out of the supply chain because we're globally based. Everything was set up to run on this just-in-time inventory, which, you know, when it functions, it's fantastic. Okay, when it works, it's great. Uh, when we're in a situation like we're in now, where everything is jacked up and crazy, it's not good. <laughs> so you're gonna wait on the product. So let me tell you, if you decide you want this table, uh, my suggestion, and this was suggested to me by my friend uh, Megan, who is the Ikea queen, and she has helped me uh, through uh, FaceTime chats to get some of the stuff together when I got stuck. But anyway, I'll link to her channel. She does beautiful things with Ikea furniture. She customizes, I just use it out of the box. Anyway, uh, the suggestion Megan had was that you get the Ikea app and when you decide on this piece or whatever piece you want, what you're gonna wanna do is like, I'm not kidding you, every day go on and check for the piece <laughs> and look for it. And you know, you're gonna be disappointed for a long time. It's gonna be out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. And then one day, that one magical day, you're gonna be having your coffee, you're gonna have given up all hope, you're gonna pull up that Ikea app, you're gonna type in the piece, and it's gonna be there. And I'm gonna tell you, you need to drop everything. If you have to call in sick to work, you call in sick to work. You get your buns over to the store and get your piece. Because within a day or two, it's gonna be gone. Because, <laughs> trust me, everybody else is doing the same thing. They've all got the app, and they're all watching for that item to come up. So get your buns over there right away, toot sweet, don't wait, and collect whatever the piece is. This is how I got all of my stuff, okay? Because none of it was ever in stock. And <clears throat> I've done it with the table, the sewing table, the kitchen island, and also my desk. And the desk I waited for the longest. When I decided on the desk that I wanted, it took five months. Okay, five months, because I, that it was specific. I wanted that in white, because it came in in the navy, which is pretty, but I wanted white furniture because my space is small and I wanted light and bright. So uh, five months I waited on the table, <laughs> or the, the desk. And when it popped up that one magical morning, I'm like, oh, you know, it's like the, um, what is that movie? The movie with Natalie Wood when she was a child, uh, Miracle on 34th Street. I love that movie. You know, they go into the house and she's like, oh, you know, it's stupid. Or, or they're, they're driving in the neighborhood and she wanted the house for her family. And she's like, I believe, I believe, I believe. It's stupid, but I believe. I don't know. And then, boom, there was the house. Uh, this is kind of like that. <laughs> so you're going to be going, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. And you're going to be giving up all hope. And then all of a sudden, there it is. Okay, that's today's video. That is all about the Norden gate leg table that I use for sewing. I think it's fantastic. If you're blessed enough to have a store, head over there and take a look at them. They will have them on the showroom floor. Even if it's not in stock, it'll be on the showroom floor and you can take a look at it. You know, where I live, we got an Ikea store um, in town a couple of years ago. I love going there. Go to the store and take a look at it first. And I'm telling you, it's going to look tiny in the store. <laughs> it's going to look really small. But uh, as you can see in the video, it's ample space. So um, that's my uh, recommendation. That's what I'm using. I love it. I'm happy with it. I hope you found that helpful. And, uh, you know, drop a note below and share with all of us what you use for your sewing table. Okay, that's it. I don't know what I wanted to say. I had something else to say. Oh, I know. I was going to tell you, drop below what you're using. Like, because I know a lot of you are still using dining room tables. That's where I started spare rooms, whatever. Let us know. Let us know what you use. If you have used the Norden table, I would like to hear what you think. And um, okay, that's it. That's all I got. We're done. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.